Hello, and welcome to Tea Time Oddities, the podcast where we explore the strange and the unusual throughout history. I'm your host, Danielle, and today we'll be talking about the ship known as Mary Celeste. So, pop the kettle on, grab a warm cup of tea, and let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Today is episode 14, and we are talking about the odd history and events surrounding the ship called Mary Celeste. So before we get into the episode, I want to talk about quickly where I've been. (laughs) I've sad to say I missed November, so this is kind of November's episode, November and December. I'm going to do two this month, hopefully, but I had COVID and I have not really been feeling well. So I had to just take some time to collect myself and just, you know, get in the right headspace to record an episode. But I'm feeling better now and I'm very much ready to record this episode. Today I am drinking a mixed berry tea. It is from Twinings and it it tastes pretty good. Um, I'm not normally a fan of herbal teas, as I've said in the past, but. It's okay. <laughs> Mainly just helps my throat because I'm still kind of, still kind of sick. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into it. The Mary Celeste was built in Canada in 1861 and was registered first under the name Amazon. The first voyage took place in Nova Scotia in June of 1861. The ship loaded lumber from nearby islands and set sail to London to deliver the cargo. The captain of the ship, Robert McLellan, fell ill soon after the ship left port, and his condition only worsened as the trip went on. This prompted the ship to turn back to Nova Scotia, where McLellan died on June 19th. John Nutting Parker took over as captain of the ship and completed the trip to London. However, the ship had some issues on its travels. It crashed into some fishing equipment while it was in Maine. Once it reached London, the Amazon once again collided with another ship in the harbor, causing the other vessel to sink. The Amazon remained as a trade ship until October of 1867, when a storm washed the ship to shore. The boat was left there and was considered a shipwreck. Later that month, a man named Alexander McBean took the ship and sold it as salvage. A New York man by the name of Richard W. Haynes bought the ship for $1,750, which in today's money is around $44,133. And he spent roughly $8,800 to restore it, which in today's money is $222,557. So clearly he put some money back into this thing. He renamed the ship from Amazon to Mary Celeste. In October of 1872, the ship began loading cargo at Port 50 in New York on the East River. The ship acquired around 1,700 barrels of alcohol. The Mary Celeste left port on Tuesday, the 7th of November, captained by Benjamin Briggs. Sadly, the ship never arrived at its destination. A ship by the name of Di Grata departed a few days after Mary Celeste and followed a similar route. They came upon the Mary Celeste on the 5th of November. The captain of Di Grata, Captain Morehouse, suspected something was amiss, as the ship was moving oddly. Upon further investigation, the ship was vacant. Captain Morehouse sent over two men to search the vessel and figure out what had occurred. The men later testified that the crew had seemingly left the ship willingly, with no obvious signs of danger present. There was some water in the boat, but not anything substantial. There were no signs of violence, damage, or fire. Food remained in the storage area. Most of the ship's papers and navigational tools were missing, along with the lifeboat. Captain Morehouse decided to bring Mary Celeste with him to harbor, hoping to receive some compensation for finding this lost ship. Almost immediately, theories and rumors began to emerge to explain the missing crew of Mary Celeste, which still had not been found. Some thought Morehouse had forcefully taken the vessel and claimed to find it adrift in order to gain financially. 
Others posited that Briggs and Morehouse had conspired to have the ship salvaged and found quote-unquote lost at sea. Some even suggested that Riffian pirates may have been responsible, but that theory quickly falls apart as almost nothing was missing from the ship. So what did happen on the Mary Celeste? If you do any sort of research into this topic, you'll see a lot of articles writing, you know, all the stuff was left completely undisturbed, you know, there were teacups still warm from the tea inside of it, and, you know, people's half-eaten meals, but I looked at MaryCeleste.net, which is like a website completely dedicated to telling the only absolute truth of what happened on the ship, and mostly they said that, you know, yeah, there was a lot of stuff left undisturbed, but you know, the ship pretty much just looked like people ran off of it. So there was a few things, you know, laying around. It wasn't like they were raptured off the ship or anything crazy. I know, I know there was a lot of supernatural explanations for this as well, but I didn't really want to dig into that. Although we cannot say concretely what happened, there are a lot of theories and a lot of things that make more sense than others. So we can kind of piece together what may have occurred. Many people agree that some sort of freak accident must have happened, and that forced the crew to quickly abandon ship. It could have been a number of things, including an iceberg, a water spout, an earthquake, or even an explosion. Now, didn't we just say that there were no signs of fire or damage to the ship? Well, that's exactly what the University College of London looked to investigate. They created a model of the ship. With that model, they produced an explosion using butane gas. This type of explosion was large, yet was extinguished quickly. This explosion is referred to as a pressure wave explosion, meaning initially there's a large amount of fire present, but it fizzles out quite quickly. So the air remained mostly cool in the hull, leaving almost no soot or signs of fire. This would explain the sudden abandonment of the ship, the seemingly undisturbed setting, yet the fate of the crew still remains a mystery. Ten people, never seen or heard from again, lost at sea. While there are many who think they know what occurred on the decks of the Mary Celeste that fateful winter day, the truth unfortunately perished along with its crew. There were ten people who were on that ship that day. Benjamin S. Briggs, Albert G. Richardson, Andrew Gilling, Edward William Head, Wilker Lawrenson, Wolker Lawrenson, Aaron Martson, Boy Lawrenson, Gottlieb Gondesol, Sarah Elizabeth Briggs, and Sophia Matilda Briggs. I feel like the most heartbreaking part of this story is that a lot of people get lost in the mystery of, you know, what happened, why did they leave the ship, and kind of, you know, the 10 people who died kind of get lost by the wayside in all this the captain had his wife on board as well as his two-year-old daughter so it's it's just very scary to think about how they must have felt and you know that's just me being very empathetic but that's what I think about is just you know those people must have been so scared and when I'm looking at you know like the names and the ages of all these people None of these people were over the age of 40. Like they they weren't even like old. Like they were so young. And it's just crazy that they somehow got off the ship into a lifeboat and just never were seen or heard from again. It's it still baffles me. I mean, obviously they went somewhere <laughs> somehow, but it's just weird to think that, you know, 10 whole people just vanished. It's almost as if the ship was somehow cursed, which I don't know if I believe that, but it just seems like it is because it literally, the first trip this ship made, it got into two accidents and sunk a ship and then was also, you know, left abandoned at one point because it had washed up onto shore. It just seemed like the ship did not want to be <laughs> used. I don't know. It's just very weird. You can find a full list of my sources in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram at Tea Time Oddities. I post photos related to the episodes as well as odd stories in the middle of the month. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tea Time Oddities. 
make sure to keep the kettle on and check in next month. Goodbye.